Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Tulum, Mexico, two hours south of Cancun. The single most hyped place in the whole country and a mandatory stop for all lifestyle Instagrammers. But does the hype live up to reality? That's what I'm back here to see six years after my last visit. So far, I must say, a lot of things are looking the way they used to. That's relieving. Well, that relief is about to pass. Here's Tulum as I remembered it, this exact same time six years back. Beach is so perfect it almost felt unreal. And awesome late night parties at the beach clubs. But a lot has happened since then. Brown algae has taken the whole coastline hostage during the summer season, leaving the water murky and smelly. We'll get back to that. First, let's find out where to stay in this town. Yep, somewhere around here, we're supposed to have an Airbnb. Best housing options will be found about 10 minutes from the center. This is it. In this town, how you live will make a huge difference, so choose carefully. A little cramped, but it will do. So how many bedrooms do we have? I'm having a big one. Huh, it looks exactly the same. So, of course, there's a third bedroom, because we are two people, after all. Okay, I wasn't the one booking this one. Hey, Philip, what did we actually pay for this place? Come in here during summer, you'll thank yourself for getting a pool. It will be insanely hot. And you'll need another thing, too. Thing with Tulum, distances are large, taxes are crazy expensive. Solution, get a scooter. Getting one of these isn't that expensive. We paid $30 a day. You look like one of those guys from Sons of Anarchy. From where? He's an outlaw. Let's hit this one. Who's driving? This was never a negotiation. Trying to do Tulum without a scooter is like trying to kill an elephant with a spoon. It's simply not possible. Down by the beach, you'll pass a row of beach clubs. In true Tulum tradition, Pick one to spend the day. Tulum works pretty much like this. You choose a beach club, you pay an entry, which means you have to consume stuff up to a certain amount. This particular one costs $50 a day. Moment of truth. Is the beach really in as poor condition as we've heard? Looks nice enough, but I spot a seaweed problem. The harsh reality. It's even worse than we feared. The massive growth of brown algae called Sargasso has gotten worse and worse each summer and this year the main beach isn't even swimmable. Not talking about the smell. And this goes for pretty much the whole 10 km long coastline. Normally this would have been a busy day at the beach. Now there's no one here. What adds to the misery is that I know just how perfect this beach was this same time just six years back. Judging by recent years, this is now what you can expect between April and September. It absolutely breaks my heart seeing this. This was all pristine white sand everywhere. And the ocean brightest shade of turquoise. Now brown goo. And this new reality doesn't just apply to Tulum. The whole Yucatan East Coast will be a mess during the summer months. Playa del Carmen, yes. Up for a swim? Uh, no, no. Well, can't blame him. And yeah, people are not happy. So, how do you feel about the seaweed situation here? Well, we were really disappointed when we arrived because we were here celebrating my bachelorette party with a group of girls. And we were just really surprised because we've been here in the past and the beach was not like this. 
we love the ocean and we love to swim and we haven't been able to do that and it doesn't smell great either. Do you regret coming here? <laughs> we had great company and some great food, but it, it was disappointing. Yep. We've had some great dinners. It saved the trip! <laughs> Reason behind the outbreak, among other things, pollution. And who's to blame for all of this? Well, we are. This is how humanity works at its worst. How do you feel about all this seaweed? It's okay. It's okay? Not the uh, seaweed, but uh, the location is good. Let's cheer up, because yes, this is still one hell of a location. Ah. And we didn't just pay that $50 entry without getting something back. Thank you. One thing is still the same about this place. You can still count on the kitchen to deliver. Yeah, food in Tulum is good. But don't ever expect to get a straw for your drink. It's an eco thing. You're eating with some kind of blade of grass here. If you desperately need one, bring one. It's probably illegal, <laughs> but bring one. Can I get a drink up here? I will die drinking this. I will die. It is a bit funny seeing how everyone posting on Instagram right now do their best to cover up the seaweed situation. But make no mistake about it, this is how it looks. Still good for a nice healthy little walk. But far from the absolute beauty it used to be half a decade ago. Luckily Tulum offers other ways to get a swim out in the open. The area is home to some of the best cenotes in the country. We're trying the two main ones. Here we are at Gran Cenote. But God, this place has become expensive. 500 pesos. I can't remember what I paid last time, but it definitely wasn't $25. Well, what can you do? It is a must-see. Gran Cenote. Here we go. Hello, mister. Uh, can I pass here? Thank you. Are you excited, Philip? Yes. What is a cenote anyways? Well, some kind of natural pit or underground cave, kind of? Well, it's a turtle. Naturally inhabited with aquatic animals. I'm gonna say hi to that turtle. Cold. That's like Swedish uh, when, summer in Sweden. So it takes a little while to get used to the fact that the small fish are taking little nibbles off you, just like the procedure you pay money for. The vest and mask are included in the price. The rest is up to you. Get in there. <laughs> The Bat Cave. Hello. Do you like tourists? Are you Batman? I am Batman. I am as disappointed as you. Also, first thought those were bats. But hey, looking down, you sort of realize why they gave you a vest. What's so special about swimming in cenotes? It's kind of hard to explain. Hey, this is nice. I've forgotten how refreshing these underwater caves are. As silly as it sounds, these lakes provide a sense of wilderness experience. Even though you know you're surrounded by tourists. Especially when you're splashing around through the caverns in the dark. Like a safe little adventure. Just one thing, eventually this water will make you freeze to the bone. Too cold? Too cold. Uh, yeah, I do kind of look forward to some Mexican sun after this. Too bad, cause we're not done here. Gotta try them both. Okay, not as eager to go in a second time. These cenotes are cold. 
Los Ojos is located just a little further out of town and offers a bit more exploring. It's considered slightly more challenging and also considered the best cenote in Mexico. Pleasantly surprised? Yes, it was much more fun than I anticipated. That's a wrap. Now let's go drinking. The nightlife in town really isn't that bad. The seaweed issue has crippled the beach club scene and people tend to just stick to the bars here. But before hitting the tequila, let's get something in that belly. This is romantic, isn't it, Philip? Oh yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Just off the main street is where you find Tulum's major meetup spots, Bate Bar. Every night's got a different kind of show going on. You just never know what to expect. And about tequila, mezcal is what you're supposed to drink here. But don't shoot it. She tricked me, she tricked me. Mezcal is made for sipping. But if you insist on a shot, at least do it right. Mezcal, it's for you who think tequilas are too soft. Anyways, this place is all about making their own sugar syrup. So for God's sakes, get a mojito. Why should people come to Tulum? It's a paradise. We have a beautiful weather, the sun, and the Mexicans, obviously. Tulum is the best place for connect with yourself and feel, feel good. But what if you want to feel good and shake your legs? Then this place right across the street should have you covered. Popular among both travelers and locals, and no entry charge whatsoever. The dance floor doesn't really fill up until midnight, but when it does, it's party for real. Just warning you, dancing Southside to Tulum, you get sweaty, you get sweaty here. Just be prepared for the locals being way better dancers than you. walk home. Tulum Town is nice for a little walk, but perhaps save it for late afternoon. Well, it's a burning hot day here in Tulum, that's for sure. We like it hot here. Yeah, I've seen better days as well. And frankly, there's really not that much to do here during daytime. Jump on that scooter again. It's time to see Tulum's number one tourist attraction. No, not the ocean. The marvel hiding behind here. Yes, something of a must when visiting Tulum. The ancient Maya ruins. And that's a shocker. Entrance is only $5. And remember to pay the extra 50 peso if you're taking any recordings of any kind. Inside, you'll be greeted by these strange fellows. It's not a monkey. Something tells me a bite from these will be infectious. Those guys really are all around this place. The adventure begins. Yep, that passage marks the entry to this mythical lost city. What's the deal with this place? Well, it was one of the last great cities constructed by the Maya and dates back around 800 years. It's also the only Maya settlement located at a Caribbean beach. If I had to build a city, this is probably where I'd put it as well. But yeah, it used to be even more stunning. Definitely less seaweed and garbage when I was here the last time. Back to those glory days of 2016. 
Don't forget to bring water. Unlike pretty much the rest of Yucatan, vendors won't be throwing themselves at you here, because they're banned. A visit well worth one and a half hour or so. If this is your kind of flavor, you've got an even cooler place two hours drive away. Chichen Itza, one of the new seven wonders of the world. This one will blow your mind and reminds a little bit of the pyramids in Giza, Egypt. Only downside, entrance is $25, but still worth it. Let's give that beach life another shot. We already have our suspicions about the water quality, but let's check out the uh, public beach. Sand is just so incredibly bright. Gotta bring these shades. This one is only a five minute ride south of the ruins, and it does in fact look considerably better than the other beach. There's actual people around here. One or two are even swimming. But then again, it used to be so much better. It is a bit frustrating. I know how good this beach used to be. Ah, oh, the memories. But now another problem. It's too bright. Too bright. He's not kidding. Without heavy sunglasses, your eyes will get sore here. Anyhow, only way to guarantee that turquoise water during summer is to visit an island. On the way back to Tulum town, stop by this backpackerish little village. It's got that laid-back traveler's vibe we all love. Hey, I'd even consider spending a night here. If nothing else, pay a visit just for this crazy Muay Thai style diner. Approved by Philip. Look, Daddy, I can drive as well, you know. All right, at least I can cook. Never seen before footage. I'm not saying I can cook well, but I can cook. There you go, the soon to be world famous Swedish gringo on my Okay, maybe just leave cooking to the professionals. This is after all where Tulum really starts picking points. Food is simply excellent. Very high standards on the restaurants here. Incredibly good food and it's rice worthy as well. Yes, we like pasta. Why should people come to Tulum? I think enjoy the time with the natural and love yourself, that's all. To find yourself? Find yourself, exactly. Yes. And if you don't want to find yourself in the bar every night, restaurants here work just as well for meeting new people, especially if you want to mingle with the hip locals. But I kind of like bars. Love this place! But we're not doing that tonight. Every Tuesday night there's a special event going on in town. Let's try some local salsa party. This venue in the outskirts of town is just about as local as it gets and incredibly cheap. Can you say that again? You can change that ticket for water, beer or soda right next to the main bar, okay? You heard this, so you pay 50 pesos and you actually you get, get some. You get, a drink? You get something go. for it. Welcome to Mexico. That's two and a half dollars, by the way. I might finally have encountered the real Mexico here. Don't be surprised if you're the only real gringo here. And don't be afraid to enter the dance floor. It's not a competition. A beer, please? Ah! <laughs> Some of the guys here, they know how to dance for real. But later on, dance has become a little less formal. Just jump around a little. Good to know, this is not a late party place. It closes at 11, which happens to be when the place next door opens. After party! And believe it or not, that 50 peso ticket even buys a first free drink here. Incredible.
there will be no more salsa from here on. This is all popular music and reggaeton. So that's one way to do Tulum nightlife if you don't want to spend $200 in a beach club. And frankly, it was much more fun. Tulum, Tulum, Tulum. There sure is something special about this place. But is it special enough? As this seaweed problem seems to grow worse year by year, there's simply no guarantee this December or this January will be free of seaweed. Let's hope and pray this problem doesn't grow any bigger so you can at least enjoy one half of the year here. I'm sorry to loom, but I just can't recommend people coming here if this situation isn't cleared out. All right, Tulum, it hasn't been perfect, but it has been a pleasure. See you in Cancun. A place that didn't really turn out the way we thought, in a good way. And then we're finally coming back to Brazil. Thanks for watching and be safe.